What's up, it's you for today's video. We're for Honey Pokemon Team. Now, I'm not talking about the honey you put on your bread. I'm not talking about combis. I'm talking about the trainer honey from the Isle of Armor DC. Not, not DC, DLC. Man, I thought someone was disconnecting from a battle. If you want to follow me on Twitch, make sure you do. That's where I do all my battles there. On my theme teams, my Pokemon sweeps. I battle all my audience and stuff. It's super fun. We sweep randoms. We get some salty DCs. I uh, do shiny hunting and other Pokemon uh, non-related Pokemon games too, so come and check that one out. The link is in the description. Oh, the video. The fast battle we have today is against Dilly King, and this battle was super, super, super long. It was almost three quarters of this video, so a very, very long battle, and uh, a very interesting theme team as well. So we got a Milotic here, and I've got my Blissey. So in these teams, right, I use the exact Pokemon and move sets that the, uh, you know, the Honey will use. So we got Fire Blast, Thunder, Blizzard, and Light Screen. For some reason, this Blissey has Light Screen. I don't know why. I mean, guys, Blissey's special defense is just, it's just bad, all right? So we got a, uh, a physical uh, sweeping dragon dancing Mila Tick here. It's going to be boosting its attack and speed. I'm going to be going for a Thunder. Now, the ability on this is uh, Serene Grace, and we're going to be hoping for some Paralyzers, maybe. So Thunder did some really good damage, and I got a nice Paralyze on the Mila Tick to start off the battle. Now, the EVs I was running on this one, too, were max health and max special attack. So I was sort of like trying to expand, uh, you know, Blissey's uh, just offense a little bit rather than being a bulky one. So Thunder is going to miss there, and I do get a Paralyze, which is really, really good. So now I can go for another uh, Thunder on this, and judging on what they've got on the rest of the team, I don't think a lot of these Pokemon are going to be liking to swap in. So we got another uh, Paralyze there on the Milotic, which is really good. Blissey is going to be firing off another Thunder on the Milotic, and it all Almost takes it down very, very close. So now it's like, okay, I'm going to swap the Blissey out and I'm just going to finish it off with another Pokemon, right? Which is going to be Slazzle. I'm saving Blissey for a little bit later on in the game. Now, Milotic gets paralyzed again. And this Milotic got paralyzed a lot of the times at the start. I, I, I wasn't happy about that or anything, all right? So now we've got Slazzle here. This one's max speed, max special attack, timid nature. I decided to run it. I thought it was a pretty good, you know, spread to run on this... Uh, set. So we've got Dragapulse and Toxic and Corrosion on the set, and I'm going to go for Dragapulse and just take this Milotic out of the game. Milotic's a very bulky Pokemon, so I was very happy to get around that. I, also, I also found it kind of funny that Blissey did so much like damage to it, right? So the first Milotic's down, and guess what, people? We have got a full Milotic team, and guess what? They're all shiny, so I like a... They've also got, like, different names as well. You might be able to pick up on some of the names. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be going for a, uh, a like a Toxic on Milotic. Right now, the item around on my Slazzle was Focus Ash, so I could live like one attack. Uh, the other move this has is actually uh, it protect as well, so I could go for the Toxic and then protect. So Milotic is gonna go for a Skull. What's it gonna do? Burn me, and I'm gonna live on one health there. So Milotic is gonna take a little bit of damage from the Toxic, which is good. Now I'm thinking here, what should I do? Should I just go for a uh, Dragon Pulse? I might get another turn at the Toxic up there and get that, you know, real Toxic burn going on the Milotic. Now, Milotic, instead of attacking me, is going to set up a Akaring, and that's going to be really annoying because it's got Leftovers and Akaring, so it's going to have really, really brilliant sustain, and it's going to take a lot longer for that Toxic to actually do start doing, like, lots of, like, heavy, heavy damage, right? So now, all I can do here is go for a Dragon Pulse, cross my little uh, Slazzle fingers, and I'm going to be going down. Nothing I can really do there. So going for the Dragon Pulse, and it really is not going to do very much damage to Milotic at all. My Milotic's a really cool Pokemon, in my opinion, right? It can be bulky. It can be sweeping. Like, it even gets, like, even gets, like, a Dragon Dance now. So you can do, like, a, a physical set. It could be, like, a, uh, a special uh, sweeping set. It's got enough bulk to use setup moves. And it can also run very tanky and support-like, too. So... Quite a versatile Pokemon, uh, to say the least. I always, when I look at Milotic, I always remember in when you very, very first see it, I believe it's on in Gen 3 and it's in a raining area and the trainer sends out the Milotic, right? The first time I seen them, I'm like, man, what is this Pokemon? And it just freaking bodied me in the rain. It was like Water Pulse or something like that. Did that happen to anyone else or did it just happen to me? It was in Gen 3 and it, one of these trainers had it. I don't know if it was near Fortree City. I could be wrong about that, but I just got absolutely dumpstered by it. Like, the first time I seen it, I'm like, I really want to get this Pokemon. But I didn't know, like, what Pokemon it actually was, like, from. I didn't even know about Phoebus or anything like that. Just a little bit of a flashback from my childhood Pokemon memories. Anyway, so we got the Tokus here. This is going to be a huge, pretty much generic set. We've got Air Slash, Dazzling Gleam, Aura Spheral, and uh, Heat Wave there. Pretty good coverage moves. Max Speed, Max Special Attack. Now, obviously, once again, I will say that 
these moves are the moves that the actual, uh, you know, trainer Honey has. So I didn't obviously pick these moves. You know, you're not going to see me using Air Slash Tokus every day of the week. So we're going to take out that second Milotic there. And a third one is going to come out. They're all shiny as well. They're looking pretty fresh shiny, I've got to say. So I can go for Air Slash here. Uh, my best move is probably that because I can, you know, use the Serene Grace with that and try and go for as much luck as possible too. Now, I know Milotic can run Ice Beam. Like, it definitely can run that. And it will do some pretty good damage to the, uh, you know, if it does have that. Now, instead of going for Ice Beam, it's going to be going for Attract. So I was like, okay, Attract. Interesting. So Infatuation on my Togus. And now it's going to have the Burn. And I'm thinking, okay, well, it's definitely going to have Marble Scar, right? This thing is going to be very, very bulky. So now we're going to swap into Dar Manitan. This was a Gorilla Tactics Dar Manitan with Choice Band. And this set was, uh, it was very, very strong, but it actually really struggled in all the battles I did. I know that's interesting, right, that, you know, such a powerful Pokemon could struggle, but I just got, like, it got counted in all the battle, pretty much all the battles I did. I didn't really have a problem with that either. So we got Ice Will Crash, Stone Edge, Earthquake, and Zen Hitbot, uh, max speed and max attack, right? Um, that's usually what you run on this set. So I thought, okay, my best bet here is to go for the Stone Edge, and Stone Edge is going to land on the Mantic, but look how bulky that is, man. Um, I, I, like, it took that, like, pretty well. Now, Milotic, instead of attacking me, is going to go for the attract, right? So there's a 50% chance I won't be able to do anything, but there is a 50% chance that I will be able to do something. Plus the, uh, you know, the Whirlpool's up on the field too, so it's actually doing damage to me at the end of the turn. So I'm Choice Band. I've got Gorilla Tactics. Obviously, I'm going to go for a Stone Edge again. I was a little bit worried about a miss and also worried about getting, like, uh, you know, infatuated. And I got a Mobilize, and now Milotic is going to be able to get the Recover off. This was hard because Milotic, like, the bulky Milotics were quite hard to get around uh, with this team. Like, even with something like Darmanitan, right? Um, so we got the uh, Whirlpool doing more damage to me. I've actually dropped below half health now, just basically pure to the, uh, you know, the Whirlpool damage. I might have said Waterfall damage before I apologize if I said that. I've been up for, I've been up for 31 hours now. So good times, people, good times. YouTube or stream alive. I do it for you people because I love bringing that content. And I'm always trying to bring that content on a daily basis for your entertainment too. So, uh, Milotic heals up for the 69th time there. I'm going to get hit by another round of the Whirlpool. So, my health is really starting to deplete fast. I've got to get some sort of attacks on this Milotic. So, maybe, like, let, let's say it this way. Even if I can't take it out with Darmanitan, if I can put it in a low amount of health to clean up with maybe Tokus, that could be good too. So, getting through that, go for the Stone Edge, hoping for a crit there. Man, it's a clear two-hit KO on Milotic. Like, this thing's tanking it really, really well. Now, Milotic is going to go for another Whirlpool there. Does some pretty good damage. And my Darmanitan has one turn left. Can it land the Stone Edge? Or will Milotic get another recover off? This is a very, very big thing. So if I landed this, I wouldn't go down to Whirlpool. But I didn't. Oh, if I missed or I was infatuated. Oh, and it happens. I no. And now Milotic can go for another recover, and I'm going to go down to the Whirlpool. If that didn't happen, Milotic uh, would have gone down, and I wouldn't have actually fainted to the Whirlpool. So that, was, that worked out very, very well for them uh, in that matchup. Um, so pretty much, I've got one more chance here. I can go for another Stone Edge. If Whirlpool lands, I'm done. A Whirlpool actually ran out on the turn before there. So go for it. Yeah, Stone Edge, I get uh, mobilized by love again. And I can't swap either. That's the thing. With Whirlpool, you can't swap. So I had no chance there. My dumb man just got hacks right out of this battle. So we got Blissey left. We got Tokus left. And we got a couple other Pokemon too. Now, I wasn't, once again, I was only allowed to Dynamax or G-Max the Pokemon that uh, the trainer did. So I wasn't allowed to, you know, G-Max or Dynamax, you know, Blissey, Slazzle, Tokus, Darmanta, etc. If you're if you're wondering why I didn't do that. So now we're going to go into Blissey. Blissey served me so well uh, at the start of the battle stop. Well, I may, I may as well swap it in here. I can't get a Paralyzed, but I can definitely get some damage with Thunder. So go for Thunder here. I was running Modest on this set. I wanted to get as much Special Attack damage as possible. And really, it did very underwhelming damage. I mean, it is a Milotic, and it's coming off of Blissey's Special Attack. So it's not the greatest in the world. No stab. Um, it was worth a try, though. Now I'm thinking, am I going to get walled by this thing completely? Like, what am I going to do? So now we're going to go into Galadia. Now, Galade is a physical set. It's got Sword Dance. And it also has access to Leaf Blade too, right? So I thought this would be really good. I didn't use this at the start because I didn't know if there was any counters for it. But at this stage, um, it's getting into dire straits here. Am I going to be able to get it through this thing or not? 
So I was like, I can get a free sword down tap, or I may just attack it there before it does anything else to me, and I just take it out. I didn't want to play any games there setting up sword dance. I didn't want to go through that whole song and dance with the infatuation and stuff, or just any other status moves there. Now, the item I get this was Life Orb 2, Max Attack and Max Speed. A lot of these Pokemon are either Max Attack and Max Speed, or Max Special Attack and Max Speed. So out comes the uh, fourth Milotic here. Once again, I contemplated going for another sword dance here for quite a while, but I thought... What if it actually takes me out? What if it status me? I just want to get the damage off why I've got it there, right? So Leaf Blade is a clear two-hit KO on the Milotic. Milotic's going to go for a Breaking Swipe. Breaking Swipe doesn't do a lot of damage to me. However, it does actually drop my attack stats. It's like, okay. Leaf Blade is still a pretty good play here because if Leaf Blade does crit, you know, it's going to ignore all those drops and I'll you know, definitely take out the Milotic. The flip side to that is I won't be able to take Milotic out with the next Leaf Blade, and I may have to go for a Sword Dance. So taking the risk there, it does not crit, and Milotic is going to be able to live that one, unfortunately, and now it's going to have rest. I'm like, oh, man, this team was, like, the last two Milotic were really, really stally. Like, it was very, very hard to get around them. So it's like, okay, do I keep going for the crits? It can keep going. Like, if this thing has got Sleet Talk and what I think it's got, and it's got Sleet Talk, and the kick is getting, like, Breaking Swipe against me. It'll just keep erasing Sword Dancer's boost continually, right? So I might be best just to wait for a crit here. So go for the Sword Dance there. I'm going to get, have uh, plus one in attack now. And Milotic is going to go for the Sleet Talk, and it gets Breaking Swipe. So I'm back to neutral where I was before. So I'm like, okay, I'm starting to run out of health here. I don't know whether I can go for a Sword Dance and live the next one. Um, I don't want to take that risk. I'd rather get some sort of damage while the Milotic is asleep at least for another turn. So going for that big hit and it doesn't happen, unfortunately. I would have loved to critical hit there. Um, I've got Life Orb too, so I'm not going to be around in this world for very much longer. So Milotic is going to go for another Sleep Talk here. Hope he gets the classic Pimp Knight rest. And guess what? It gets Coil and Sets. Like, okay, that sucks as well. So that's going to get a defensive boost. So this is a very, very bulky Milotic and it's got the Breaking Swipe there for support. Now, the item it's got to, as you can see, is leftover, so it's very, very bulky. I am going to 1,000% need a Leaf Blade to actually take this out. So, go for that Leaf Blade there, and it doesn't crit. Man, I wasn't actually quite lucky at all with that Leaf Blade. I didn't even get, like, one crit. So, down goes uh, Gallade. Poor Gallade. He tried his best, but uh, he just got tanked so hard there. Um, like, bulked out. Tanked, walled, everything. They couldn't do anything at all. So I've got three more Pokemon left, and I've got two more Milotic to deal with, right? Now, bear in mind, we still both have a Dynamax at this stage in the game. Now, I think it's time to bring in Blissey. I was thinking this would be good to go for Thunder, right? Now, Milotic is going to go for a Breaking Swipe. Since it's got some boost with Coil, it's actually going to do a little bit of damage to Blissey because Blissey's defense is trash, right? So go for the Thunder, hoping I can take it out. And the next Milotic is going to go down to Blissey. Blissey was very good in this battle. Like, it was very, very handy. Like, that's the second Milotic is actually taken out. So, the last uh, Pokemon there is uh, Millie. I thought it was going to say Miley Cyrus. And I can go for a, a Thunder here. And Thunder will be super effective. I may get a, a, a spe like a, a Paralyzed too. So, now uh, Milotic is going to go for a Scummy Water. That's not going to do very much damage. Obviously, they're trying to drop my Axie. And Thunder is going to land again. So, like, okay, this is really, really good, right? So we're going to go for another Thunder there. I was hoping for a Paralyze, and I do get it, which is really nice. We got another Milotic after this. Sorry, I'm getting my Milotic counts mixed up. So Thunder is going to miss, and now Muddy Water or Scummy Water. It really does look scummy. Like, that's like that sewage water, like, really. Or like just, you know, Muddy Water in a, in, in a lake. So I can go for another Thunder here. Hopefully I can maybe, like, land another one or two hits against this thing, and then I can clean up maybe my tokens, right? So go for another Thunder. One more will take out the Milotic. I'm confident about that. And now it's going to go for Brian. So Brian is going to get powered up. That does a fair bit of damage considering uh, Blissey's really good health and special defense there. And now it's going to go for another one. I do get a miss on Thunder, and that did actually cost those two Thunder misses. Blissey goes down. But Blissey did a very good job there. You know, I was happy with its performance. So we got Venusaur as the last Pokemon. So obviously, Honey, G-Max is a Venusaur. You can see the moves that's got. And as soon as he swaps it onto the field, um, you got to G-Max it pretty much. That's sort of the rule they had. Unless I really was going to lose the battle like a thousand percent. I didn't G, like, I had to G-Max it right away. So going into the big old Venusaur, I can go for its G-Max move, and that'll be super effective here. And we still got one more Milotic in the back. So this one I ran as Max Health and Max Special Attack, a very, very bulky set. And, you know, Venusaur is very bulky. So going for that G-Max Vine Lash there, we got two minutes of the battle left. 
and the fifth Milotic is going to go down. Like, this battle went right, right to the end of the timer because it was very, very long. Especially the parts with the Recover... The Recover Milotic, then we had... Sorry, the Recover Marble Scale one, and then the rest one. They took, like, forever. So, the last Milotic, we haven't seen a Dynamax. I know that Dynamax is coming. I've got G-Max Vine Lash. I know that's going to... should be about a two-hit KO against this thing. Uh, depending on what Milotic actually is, if it's offensive or very, very bulky, right? You know, because Milotic is going to get a lot of help from this thing too. So we got the last 56 seconds of the battle. Pretty much we're going to get around one to two turns here, judging on how quickly, you know, each of us actually select our moves. And it's both down to our last Pokemon too. So uh, 45 seconds left of the battle. I'm going to go for the G-Max Vine Lash. There is time for one more turn after this. And it does under half health. I was like, man, that sucks. So now we've got the Milotic going for the Max Hailstorm on my Venusaur. And it does pretty much stone damage. I can go for the next hit here. And that'll do some pretty nice damage too. Now there is the effects of uh, Venusaur's G-Max move here, which is cool. I'm going to take a little bit of hail damage too. And Milotic is going to get spanked by a couple of little uh, bits of hail. And it's uh, G-Max uh, Ferocious Vines. So now I can go for one more G-Max sweeper. I've got five seconds left on the clock as we made our final moves. And that was enough to take out the Milotic. I did have a Tokus in the back anyway. And I'd say I would have taken that out regardless. But thank you for the Battle Dillaking. A super cool team there. Six freaking Milotics. That took so long to take them out, man. That was a really, really long battle. Like that 20 minutes got pushed hard there. All right, I'm going to take a quick swig of my drink. After all, these water-type Pokemon appearing on the field. Okay, the next battle we get against Staly or Staly. Hopefully, Staly doesn't have too many uh, Staly Pokemon. We battled a couple of times. It's been a little while since we've had a battle, so I was looking forward to this one. So we got Monte Carlo or Carbo as the uh, lead here, which is the Colossal. I really like Shiny. Colossal looks like really, really nice. So I've got Slazzle the lead. Probably not, definitely not the greatest matchup in the history of Pokemon. So I thought, okay, it might set up Stealth Rock. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for that Toxic, right? I might be able to get a couple of turns of Protect if they don't attack me this turn. And they're going to use Rock Polish instead. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Slazzle still may be actually be able to outspeed it because as you know, its speed is absolutely like, you know, terrible, right? And a lot of time it relies on Steam Engine to get that uh, speed up. So now we're going to go for a Protect here. It's going to go for a Meteor Beam. It's going to be a special using set. So I'm assuming once I've seen it had Meteor Beam, it's like, okay, it's going to have Power Herb. It's still going to get the special attack boost, but it is going to do no damage to me because, you know, obviously I've got that Protect up, right? I've seen uh, Meteor Beam on so many Pokemon. Such a really, really cool move. I'm kind of glad they got that kind of move. Maybe we can have more of them in the future. So now I thought, okay, let's go for Dragon Pulse. I still have the Focus Sash attack, uh, attached, not attack, and it does okay damage. I'm pretty happy with that one. And also, remember, we do have that toxic damage like going really nicely too, because we got a couple of them at the start. So I'm going to leave on the Focus Sash there, and what's Skull going to do, Burmy? And I can go for another uh, Protect here, and that'll actually be colossal in range for me to take out with the Dragon Pulse, which would be really, really nice there. Now, I was expecting a swap the next turn then again colossal's only got a little bit of health left it's not fast really it'll lose its rock polish boost so i was like nah, i don't think they'll swap it out they won't want to risk that one but so going for the dragon pulse there and colossal uh, actually got beaten by slazzle i was actually very surprised at that outcome i mean the toxic did help me out a lot in the protect you know that gave me a lot of extra damage so now comes the uh, smoke smoke i'm gonna go for the toxic it has the corrosion ability which is gonna allow me to poison a poison type such a unique cool ability, like cool ability is Corrosion. I really, really like it. Now uh, the Sweezing is going to be a physical set. It's going to go for the play rough and take me out there. It just hit me with like, it literally just dived at me and hit me with its big old top hat. So uh, we got the poison damage on the Weezing, which is really nice. And something that doesn't happen like every day. So I could go for an Air Slash here. I was thinking if I can get a Serene Grace Air Slash, I might be able to get like some extra damage. And then if it flinches, it'll do like extra damage to the poison as well. So Weezing is going to get flinched there. I'd say they're probably going to go for like, I don't know, maybe Player Up again or maybe Explosion. I'm going to go for another Air Slash and the Weezing Alola is going to go down. So after a pretty good starter, we've taken two Pokemon out. Now, the last Pokemon is the Majana. Well, not the last Pokemon. Sorry, I've still got three to go. I've, I was thinking it was like a 3v3 there for a second. My apologies. So, go for the Heat Wave there. Does some really cool damage. And I get a burn on that as well. So, I was very, very happy. Especially when I seen it was going to be really, yeah, like, a, like a shift gear set with a physical set. Right. 
So it's going to give it plus two in speed and one in attack. So definitely going to be able to outspeed in the next turn. Tokus is weak to uh, steel type moves, but with a burn, Majana is definitely not going to be as threatening as it normally is, right? So I was really worried if I didn't have that burn, but look at the damage of Iron Head. So I definitely would have taken me out there with that burn, like if that didn't have that burn, right? So now I'm going to be going for a Aura Spear. I didn't want to miss on the Majana. Even if it lived, I was like, that's fine, but I actually get a critical hit there. So I believe that one did matter. I'm not saying it would have lived with a lot of health. It may have even gone down to the burn damage, but it was very, very close. Next Pokemon is the Gorgase. I think this is the extra small Gorgase. It's going to be going for a Shadow Ball. So I'm like, okay. And that is enough to take me out. So Tokus is going to go down to the Shadow Ball. Man, man, I had a very demanding lead there at the start. This is where the battles sort of start to turn around. So I've got my Blissey. I was like, okay, well, I might be able to go for either a Fire Blast here. That could do some good damage to the, uh, you know, the Gorgay Sprite. And Lantern is going to swap in. So like, okay, Lantern. That's cool. Sorry, I went for Blizzard. My apologies. I was actually trying to get a Free Sack set. Now, Lantern is going to be a, turned out to be a physical set. And Waterfall is a clear two-year KO against it. I went for the Blizzard to go for a Free Sack because none of my moves are really going to do you know, much damage at all. Um, it's probably got Bolt Absorb. And Fire Blast is going to do nothing. And our Light Screen now is the other move because Blissey was completely walled there. So, Blissey is going to go down not much i could have done i didn't really want to swap into any other pokemon regardless now this is where things started to get really really bad we got dynamax lantern here so i'm like okay i was really really worried whether it had like once did it have access to like an airstream move um did it have like a weakness policy uh, did it have a way of actually boosting that stat at all? That could be really bad because Lantern is a fairly bulky Pokemon, and if it did have a way to boost its speed, like the like a like a bounce something like that, that could be it. So go for the Leaf Blade there. It does a lot of damage, and then I see the weakness policy. I'm like, oh no, this is really really bad, right? So that's going to give it a boost in its uh, respective stats there. I'm going to lose some health, and now it's going to have Max Airstream. Like, oh no, I'll say this once, and I'll say it again, right? Max Airstream and weakness policy is so broken like any pokemon can get some serious chance of actually sweeping up your team if they've got decent like decent stats in speed and decent stats in like special attack and you know, or, or attack right so any pokemon like that is a threat right so it could be anything even if it's a meme set it can be very very threatening so now at lantern i'm facing this with a plus two in attack and a plus one in speed and you know with those uh with that stab and stuff like that it's pretty scary so i've got no choice here i've got to go into my gmax venusaur my other pokemon last pokemon is going to get absolutely annihilated right so i've got to go for a gmax guard here i do want to stall the lantern out that is its second turn. It's trying to get an airstream hit up against me. I know that I cannot withstand two of them, but I know that I can withstand one, barring it doesn't crit me right. So as you can see, look at the damage that did to my Venusaur. That was a lot, right? That was a lot of damage. And obviously when it's in Dynamax, the base power is like very, very hard too. So go for that G-Max Vine Lash on the Lantern, and Lantern is going to be going down. Now we've got that Gorgase left. I know that I can beat the Gorgase easy. I was kind of more worried about the last Pokemon. So I've got Sludge Bomb that could easily take out Gorgas. You know, um, I wasn't too worried about that one at all. Like, I pretty, I was pretty sure I was actually going to wall it. So the next Pokemon is the Esku. So I'm like, oh no, not Esku. This is bad because I've got a physical Pokemon left. And I've also got my Venusaur right. It's going to come in and outspeed me there. Go for an Ice Beam and Venusaur is down. It was a special Esku set. Uh, that sucks. So I've only got one more Pokemon left. And the problem here, it's actually a physical set that I've got left. But I was actually kind of hopeful that Diamantin would be able to tank uh, like a special one, like super easy. Because Diamantin's got a little bit of bulk to right? So now firstly, I'm going to go for the Choice Band Earthquake. I thought this was my best option to go for instead of like a shaky uh, shaky Earthquake. Plus when it's in its nice form, it's not as bulky, right? So I thought that'd be good. So now we've got a Hydro Pump. It's like, okay, Hydro Pump, I'll be able to take that one. I know what its special attack is, right? I should be able to be a three hit KO. And then it critted me. I'm like, no! Oh, man. So I'm going to get some extra Grass Pelt damage there in the meantime. This is my chance to go for a, uh, another attack. It's going to outspeed me due to the form change. And that second Hydro Pump is going to land and take my Darmanitan out with a crit too. Two Dan crits in a row. The second one obviously didn't matter, but definitely the first one did. Thank you for the battle there. I hope you enjoyed both these battles, people. Super fun team to run. And I'll catch you maybe tomorrow for another video. Peace out.